I'm Robert Bruce Thompson and this is the Home Scientist video series. In the last segment we saw that Rudo Professional Drain Opener appeared relatively pure visually. In this segment we'll use gravimetric or mass analysis to get a better idea of its purity. There are two possible sources of contamination in our sample, volatiles and dissolved solids. It's unlikely that concentrated sulfuric acid contains much in the way of volatiles, so we'll concentrate on the dissolved solids. The straightforward method would be to record the mass of a vessel, transfer a known mass of the acid to it, and evaporate to dryness. Any increase in mass is dissolved solids. Unfortunately, that method produces hot sulfuric acid vapor, which I don't want in my lab. So I'll work indirectly, first neutralizing the acid with sodium hydroxide to produce sodium sulfate, and then evaporating to dryness. Knowing the mass of the sodium hydroxide needed to neutralize the acid tells us the mass of sodium sulfate we expect to find. Any excess is the mass of dissolved salts. We'll also measure the mass of sodium hydroxide needed to neutralize the acid so that we can calculate the concentration of the acid to verify the value we obtained by titration in the last segment. Finally, we'll save the sodium sulfate for later use. Okay, let's get started. The first step is to determine the mass of a clean, dry beaker and record it. Our beaker weighs 106.54 grams. Now I'm going to transfer about 75 milliliters of water to the beaker. And add a drop or two of phenolphthalein solution. Okay, we're now sitting at 170.60 grams. We're going to add 10 grams of the Rudo sulfuric acid. Let the balance settle down there a little bit. 170.60. So 10 grams would take us to 180.60. Okay. First pipette takes us up to about 174. And we're closing in now. 180.4. 180.54. Okay. We're at 180.75. So we have about 10.180.74, 73. Okay, it's stabilized at 180.73. So we have about, it's dropping 72. Okay, so we have about 10.11 grams of sulfuric acid and we'll record that number. All right, the next step is to weigh out some sodium hydroxide that we'll use to neutralize our acid aliquot. We know that the gram molecular weight of sulfuric acid is about 98.08 grams per mole, and we know that one mole of sulfuric acid reacts with two moles of sodium hydroxide to form sodium sulfate. The gram molecular mass of sodium hydroxide is just under 40 grams per mole, so we can estimate we'll need about uh, two-tenths of a mole of sodium hydroxide to react with the sulfuric acid in our aliquot. So we'll begin by zeroing out or tearing the balance and transferring about 10 grams. We want a little bit of excess. Of the sodium hydroxide. Okay. We'll let it stabilize. We have 10.10 grams of sodium hydroxide in that container. So now we can begin neutralizing our acid sample. Now this will generate quite a bit of heat. Actually adding sodium hydroxide to ordinary water generates quite a bit of heat. So we're going to add it in very small amounts and you'll notice as the sodium hydroxide hits the solution and we'll swirl it you might have heard it 
starting to boil and form a little bit of steam. Okay, so there we have it. Basically, the contents of the beaker at this point are a tiny amount of phenolphthalein, water, sodium sulfate, and whatever dissolved solids were present in our original aliquot of acid. So, let's set the beaker aside for a moment. And reweigh. weighing boat and we get 13.29 grams so we'll subtract the empty weight of the boat from that to determine how much sodium hydroxide we have left and then we'll subtract that amount from the original amount of sodium hydroxide and know how much it takes to uh, neutralize a 10 gram aliquot of the acid all right the next step is to boil off all of the water present in the beaker leaving only the solids. We'll allow the solution to come to a boil and for most of the water to boil off. At that point, I'm going to finish drying it in an oven, but you can continue to dry it over the flame, uh, being very careful. Uh, the main product, solid product, present in the beaker is going to be sodium sulfate, initially in the decahydrate form, which is, uh, has a very low melting point, uh, right around body temperature. So what you'll see as the water boils off is eventually a molten mass appear, which is the sodium sulfate decahydrate, and that will continue to uh, uh, outgas water vapor until you end up with dry anhydrous sodium sulfate. We'll then weigh the resulting sodium sulfate, or rather we'll weigh the beaker and determine the amount of sodium sulfate plus contaminants as dissolved solids that were in the original sample. Okay, we're short of time, so let's summarize the numbers. We started with 10.12 grams of sulfuric acid and 10.10 grams of sodium hydroxide. We ended up with the weigh boat plus remaining sodium hydroxide massing 13.29 grams. Subtracting the 11.11 .11 gram mass of the boat, we had 2.18 grams of sodium hydroxide unused. Subtracting that from the original 10.10 grams, we used 7.92 grams of sodium hydroxide to neutralize the 10.12 grams of acid. 7.92 grams of sodium hydroxide is 0.198 moles. Each mole of sulfuric acid requires two moles of sodium hydroxide to neutralize, so the sample contains 0.099 moles of sulfuric acid. The gram molecular mass of sulfuric acid is 98.07 grams per mole, so the 10.12 gram sample contains 9.71 grams of acid, or 95.95% by weight. That's pretty close to our quick titration result from the preceding video. The empty beaker massed 106.54 grams. After thorough drying, the beaker plus solids massed 120.63 grams, a mass gain of 14.09 grams. The gram molecular mass of sodium sulfate is 142.04 grams per mole, so 0.099 moles masses just over 14.06 grams. That means dissolved solids in the original 10.12 gram sample of acid were less than 0.03 grams or less than 0.3 percent. That's pretty pure no matter how you look at it. My conclusion is that the Rudo acid, at least this sample, is pure enough for anything other than critical quantitative work. Please rate, subscribe, and comment.